This conference will now be recorded. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, welcome to uh, our uh, biweekly conference, stakeholder conference call. I appreciate everybody taking the time to join us today. Uh, I just want to remind you this conference is being recorded and will be posted on the Chamber's YouTube site later this afternoon. In addition to that, we do invite members of the media to monitor this call and to participate and ask questions, and we'd encourage them to do so as well. Uh, do want to let you folks know that I would appreciate if you put your your uh, phones and your computers on uh, mute uh, until we get to the questions and answers period, and uh, and uh, we appreciate your involvement uh, yeah, in this call. It's my pleasure to introduce a gentleman that I had uh, the opportunity to meet uh, during my very first week here in Nacogdoches. And uh, at that point, he was uh, engaged in another bank. Uh, Mayor Jimmy Mize's grandfather served on the CBDX Board of Directors, so he has a long history in his family of banking, and he was exposed to it at a very young age. Mayor Mize began his career into community banking with CBTX in 1982. He earned his degree in finance from Stephen F. Austin State University in 1984, which should uh, please uh, Dr. and President Gordon. Uh, he graduated from the Southwest Graduate School of Banking and uh, Southern Methodist University in 1985. Jimmy has experienced a very successful and active career uh, in community banking. Uh, he uh, has served on many boards of directors, including the Nacogdoches County Parks Board. Uh, the, he was a past chair of the NEDCO, or the Nacogdoches Economic Development Corporation. He's worked with Workforce Solutions. He was a past board chair of the Stephen F. Austin State University uh, Foundation, and uh, has been a, bas a past chair of the Nacogdoches County uh, Boosters Organization. And Governor Abbott appointed him uh, to the Product Development and Small Business Incubator Board uh, some years ago. He uh, currently serves as uh, Executive Vice President of uh, the Commercial Bank of Texas. Uh, Jimmy is married to Lisa Mize, whose grandfather was also a member of the CBTX Board of Directors. Would you, and I have one son, Charles, and would you please welcome with me the Honorable Jimmy Mize. Good morning, Mayor Mize. Good morning, it's good to be with all of you. I just wish we were in person. Uh, I like to, uh, I, I do better job of speaking when we're in person, we can interact and, and I can see what you're thinking and what you want to know. But anyway, I've really got, uh, I guess, just kind of a couple of uh, things that I wanted to talk to you about that are, that are going on at the city. Uh, the first one, which I'm sure all of you have heard about this past Tuesday, uh, the council voted to uh, move forward with the, uh, with the planning process with a uh, consultant uh, by the name of DTJ. Um, and and, I, and I, you, you may already know, but I want to give you a little bit of information on that background. You know, the plan, what the plan was and, and, and will be uh, expensive, but uh, the plan will do a lot of things for our community. Actually, there's, there's kind of two pieces to it. Uh, there's the comprehensive plan, which will take a look at uh, our entire city uh, and will help us with uh, planning for the future. And I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the issues that we've got to, uh, to overcome, but, but certainly the, the plan won't do it for us, but with the input from the citizens, and I hope you'll all participate. If you're not on a committee, I hope you'll go to the meetings and still participate and give your input. But, but um, you know, the, the plan uh, it is a way for us to, to bring our voices together and, and to come up with a unified uh, vision for the future. Anyway, the comprehensive plan uh, is comprehensive for the city, but it also includes an I-69 study. If you've been to uh, South Street in the Loop, you know it's coming, you can see it, uh, and it will certainly do some things uh, to our community to affect it. Uh, the other piece is a housing study. We're short on housing, as, as many uh, cities are in our state as, as we grow and have an influx of people. And uh, it's going to, uh, uh, we're gonna look at uh, the, the, the future locations for subdivisions. Uh, and then the other piece is a downtown plan. Our downtown is beautiful, uh, it, it's great, but, but we, can have, we can be more. We've got empty buildings, uh, we, we need uh, more uh, activity, we need more vibrancy in our downtown, and, and uh, we're, we're, we're poised on uh, the cusp of, of really having a great place. And, and again, I just think a little more focus 
uh, we have people that are passionate about it and I think we can move it forward. But kind of talking a little bit more, you know, about the needs of the city. Um, the city just went went through a, a capital, capital improvement plan study. The staff of the city did this for us and it revealed about 150 to 170 million dollars in potential needs. Not all of them need to be filled, but, but many of them do. Um, and and the, the downside of that is we could probably come up with about 40 to maybe 50 million dollars without raising uh, property taxes in the community. We're very fortunate. We have some general obligations uh, that we'll be paying off in September. And so that will free up a payment. It'd be kind of like you're getting your car paid off in September. And so maybe it's time to go and look at buying a new car. So, so that's our situation. That will allow us 25 to $30 million without any additional new property taxes. And then we also have money uh, that came from, uh, from, from the CARES Act and some of the stimulus money that mounts to about, uh, about another 10 million. And then beyond that, uh, we, the city has been uh, good stewards of the tax money and we have some surplus that we could use to do some of these capital improvements. But again, when, when you've got about, when you got $150 million need and you've got about 50 million that maybe you could, you can tap into, you've got to really focus. You've got to determine where your priorities are. This is part of this, this comprehensive plan. Uh, in addition to the capital improvement needs, you know, we need infrastructure. Uh, we've had several developers here recently looking to do new subdivisions in our community. Well, there's a reason that some of this property that's located when the city has not been developed. It's because there's a terrain issue or, or access, or uh, in many cases, it's, it's, it's the fact that we don't have good sewer and water to these properties. This is especially true on the West Loop where, where I-69 will be coming through. Uh, uh, and then something that, that uh, Mario and the staff pointed out to me recently that I really hadn't even thought about is if you look at the footprint of I-69, everything on the west side of I-69 where, where we should see a lot of development will be in the county. And, that's, and that's, that's a tough thing. It's tough for us to support business when we can't generate property taxes from, uh, fr from that business uh, being there. We, we need that capital. We need that to go into our tax base. And then that help, helps soften the blow to, to the rest of us. So again, again, something else that we need to study and look at and, and, and figure out how we can get those, get those properties on the west side uh, within the city limits so that when improvements are made, that can contribute to our, to our tax base and we can serve them with water and sewer uh, and, and all the things to make this a, a better place. So, um, you know, along those lines, that's, that's kind of my thoughts on the comprehensive plan. Um, the commit, there'll be two committees, one for the comp plan and one for the downtown plan. Both have about 20 people on it. Uh, those, those people come from varying backgrounds, from planning and zoning. Uh, they're investors, both private and foundations. They're, they're people from city, city committees, uh, from our parks advocacy league, uh, from civic clubs, um, from, and from SFA, uh, and, and then there's a group of people that are on there that council recommended. You know, my thought, like say for instance on the downtown plan, I wanted to find you know successful entrepreneurs that that own properties in in the downtown. And so that's kind of how I determined who who I thought that I would suggest for for the committees. And I think the other council people uh, did did something uh, really really similar. So you know that's kind of you know my thoughts on the plan. I, you know I think that we had to do it. Obviously the last comp plan was in 2003. The last downtown plan was done in 1974. I was 12 and uh, I was about to enter into high school on a campus that's about two blocks from downtown. I bought all of my school clothes uh, in downtown because that's where the department stores were. They weren't up on North Street or out University Drive. It was all downtown and every day you know, the, the uh, major part of the population came to that high school campus, whether it be the kids or their parents picking them up. And, and downtown was the center of everything. It's not that today. Downtown now is, 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 should be and likely will be more of a place that you come for entertainment. Um, so anyway, again, the plans I think are extremely important. I think updating the plans because of the age of them uh, is very important. So um, I'm looking forward to moving ahead and, and again, as I talked to people at Tuesday night after our meeting, you know, I say it was kind of 
uh, contentious. There were people who didn't want to spend the money, and then there were people who were adamantly in favor of the plan. But now we've decided we're going to spend the money, so let's come together and let's work and make sure that money does does all it can for us. So anyway, uh, I hope you'll I hope you'll get uh, involved in that. Another thing that I want to talk to you about this morning uh, is is the, uh, the the growing sentiment towards collaboration with Lufkin and Angelina County. I am so excited. Certainly, I've been talking with Wayne, and and uh, he and the Lufkin uh, Chamber uh, have have come together, and they're working on things to move us forward. Um, the CVB uh, is working with the uh, uh, Lufkin CVB. They're they're working to uh, have some projects together that would uh, encourage tourism. Um, some thoughts on that or uh, ecotourism, uh, things that would involve maybe a tour with our lakes that are around us, which is such a, a precious part of, of our area. Uh, maybe a bike ride that involved the two communities back and forth. So, I mean, some great ideas there that uh, Sherry and her staff are going to come up and come up with and bring forward to us. Um, also, uh, I was with uh, Gabe Trujillo last night and he was talking about uh, some partnerships that he has with uh, Lynn Torres, the superintendent over in, in Lufkin, and how they're working together. Uh, he mentioned it uh, in particular that they've both been waiting on some COVID testing kits. Gabe received some, I think he said yesterday. His first call was to, to uh, Dr. Torres to see if she had gotten hers, and uh, she had not. And so Gabe said, hey, I'm going to make mine available to you, and then when you get yours, then we'll We'll even back up, but I mean, I think that is the way that we'll we'll move our communities ahead. I know Dr. Gordon uh, at SFA and Dr. Simon at Angelina uh, are are working towards uh, partnerships, things that would make both of our our university and our college there in uh, in, Luf in Lufkin better. Uh, then then additionally, uh, you know, something that that I've kind of been working on and that uh, Mayor Hicks been working on when I was running for mayor. Uh, back, I guess, uh, earlier in the year, uh, I ran into Mayor Hicks, and actually I knew him, but I didn't know him well, and we got to talking and talking about collaboration between our communities. He and I, were, were, in our discussion, we're talking about, you know, anytime we talk to uh, Travis Clardy or uh, Senator Nichols or, or even our United States uh, uh, congressman, they tell us that we're so much, uh, there's so much better chance of us getting a, a need filled if we come uh, in unison and are asking for the same thing. And they can tell that we've talked about it before we've just just landed in their offices and asked for things. So so I, I think this is really going to do some good. We had uh, an economic summit in Nacogdoches with Mayor Hicks and and uh, uh, our, our city staff and, and EDC staff uh, in the fall. And so the, the thought was that we would do that again uh, as soon as we could after the first of the year. We've got a meeting plan for uh, February. Uh, and again, that will include uh, the, both mayors, both the city managers. Lufkin has actually got a new city manager, Kevin Gee. Kevin Gee and I are friends and, and have worked on some projects in the past and have been very successful. And uh, I look forward to uh, Mario getting to know him. I think that's going to be a, a great partnership. Certainly both economic development presidents will be uh, at the meeting. And then again, our goal is to create a, maybe create a project or at least create, you know, something that we can work together on. Could be job training. I know they've got Angelina College. We really struggle with job training, but, but in talking to Mayor Hicks, they need more of it. And so maybe there's something that we could work on. My vision would be that it would land somewhere between Lufkin and Nacogdoches uh, and that, that the, both communities could see that we're really working uh, to, to to pull together. So uh, anyway, I, I think there are some some great things ahead of us uh, in that in that collaboration. And I'd encourage each of you to uh, to reach out to your 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 uh, the, the person that's in your position over in Lufkin. And let's see if we can really do some 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 great things. So you know, really that's my thoughts. Uh, a few uh, you know, a couple other things. We've got a uh, we worked on a clean sweep project uh, in the in the fall where uh, the city staff uh, worked around downtown to pull weeds and paint stripes and fix curbs and, and pressure wash. Uh, I think it, we made a big impact on the downtown area. Uh, the idea would be that once this is done the first time, then we're going to pass it off to the property owner. And, and we want the property owner who owns a business on Main Street to keep the sidewalk in front of their business clean and, 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 and clear of debris and weeds and looking good. 
So uh, we're, we're in the process of kind of handing that off now. But again, uh, as you see things that need attention, please bring it to the attention of the city. There is an app called NAC311, and uh, that's a place that you can take a picture and then you can send it and it's directly logged into the computer so that uh, code enforcement uh, can, can take a look at that and, and, and work to, to fix those problems. So I guess with that, I'll, I'll open uh, it up for questions uh, or thoughts. Any questions for Mayor Mize? Mayor Mize, I just have a, a quick one myself. Uh, are, are you comfortable with the number of folks that have stepped forward or do you still need folks for the comprehensive plan committees? The, the committees have been formed. Um, in the event that there were to be someone who couldn't serve for a particular reason, um, we would uh, we, we would uh, ask someone else to step in. But there is always an opportunity for participation. These meetings will be posted, and please attend and and tell this committee what your what your thoughts are. That's that's how we're going to 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 get this information to the consultants. Certainly, the consultants will do a survey that you'll receive in the mail. They will do uh, work at events. Where they're to get input, they'll do what's called man on the street, where they just meet people and try to gather information from them. So we're going to have all kinds of ways for you to give input. But 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 the biggest, the best way again is to attend these committee meetings. Uh, Miles McCall chairs chairs the downtown plan, and uh, Ken Deppish uh, chairs the, uh, the the comp plan committee. So uh, if you know those people, reach out to them. If you don't, reach out to me. My email. Uh, MyesJ at NACTEX.us, please uh, you know, tell me, give me information, and I'll connect you. Call me on my phone. Uh, I, I, your, my cell phone's available to you, so so uh, call me and tell me your thoughts and, and let me connect you. That's great. Other questions for Mayor Mize? Mayor Mize, this is Gary Lee, Ashcraft. Um, I'm getting requests uh, from various places to support uh, affordable housing projects in the community. And I think I noticed in reading somewhere that you all are as well. Do you have any comment about that? I'm not going to put those before my board until I know something about it. We've got four to five developers that are pushing five to six different tax credit projects. These tax credit pri projects uh, offer housing at a reduced rate. They're not a HUD project. They're not a Section 8 project. They are a project that, that offers, uh, uh, I think it's 80% of the housing has to, be, has to be available at a reduced rent. The way that that works is the federal government will give this developer, if they, if they, win, the, if they win the tax credit, they'll give them about 10% of the project in tax credits, which they can turn in, they monetize, they can turn it into cash and insert in the project, lowers their costs, allows them to charge a, a cheaper rent. One of the things that add to the scorecard, so you got to think it's a scorecard, I think it's 100 and, 100 and something points. So one of the things that adds a lot to it is putting this, this tax credit project in a non-impacted area. Well, the the, the non-impacted area in Nacogdoches is, is the Northeast Ward. So that's why these projects are, that are proposed are, are along Moroni Drive going up the hill towards the Kenbrook subdivision. There is, uh, like I say, I think there's five or six projects, all except for two of them that are located right behind Sunridge Apartments uh, would require a zone change. That's going to be very difficult to do because it's going to take a zone change in some cases from an R1 to uh, to a B2 or an R4 or a B2, and and we don't we typically don't move zoning that far. We don't that's that's moving it several several classes, and so uh, that's going to be difficult to do. So I would say the one that's most likely got the best chance for passage would be the one uh, uh, along University behind the Sun Ridge, just north. Uh, of, of Moroni. Now, there's a lot of controversy about it. There's, there's, there's a lot of folks we're hearing from in these subdivisions that are concerned about multifamily housing being close to their subdivisions. So again, you, uh, again, another time you need to participate. There's a meeting coming up on February the 2nd where these developers will present uh, their, their projects to the community. Uh, and it'll be at the rec center. And I, Mario can correct me, but I think it's from five to seven. Mario, is that right? Uh, Mayor, I believe you're correct, but Larissa will have that, those specifics. 
Yes, I, it is from it, it's from 530. Um, hopefully we won't go as long as seven, but I think we have the room till about seven or 730. So it's at the CL Simon Recreation Center on North Street um, on Wednesday, February 2nd at 530. So anyway, so please participate. Thank you, Mayor. Any other questions for Mayor Mize? Hey, yes, Wayne. Good morning. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mark? Uh, Wayne, good morning, and, and Mayor Mize, good morning. I just wanted to uh, to mention that uh, Mayor Mize, uh, I know uh, Wayne had set up a meeting a couple of weeks ago with Workforce, because I know a lot of the businesses here, uh, Mayor, have uh, been concerned about getting employees back to work. And I just wanted to mention that Mayor Mize was selected by our 12 county judges to serve as a designated CEO for the Deep East Texas Workforce Board. And he's uh, in uh, nominating uh, board members serve on the uh, workforce board, uh, but also how supportive he, he is of uh, workforce and the initiatives. And so he's very involved on how we are getting workers back to uh, work and to meet the supply demands of our employers. So I just wanted to mention that, uh, Mayor Myers, we appreciate all the support you give us. Thank you. I am. I'm very supportive of, of uh, workforce and Mark and, and, and what they do. Uh, it's just kind of an unknown jewel. We need, we need more information about it and, and, uh, I certainly appreciate what you do. And, and you might be interested in knowing both you and Mark and, and Mayor Mize uh, that, that uh, we sat through the call last week with the United States Chamber of Commerce CEO, Suzanne Clark, and she clearly art articulated the two major issues of supply train uh, interruptions and the uh, difficulty in, in mobilizing the workforce. So uh, that representation is very much appreciated. One more question. I just need a clarification. This is Donna from Channel 9. Um, Mayor, can you clarify for me the, um, the low income housing tax credit proposals? Was that something the city pursued, the property owner pursued, or these developers just popped up and say, we want to build this up? Donna, the first we knew about the projects was when we got a letter from the developers that said we have applied for tax credits this is where we would like, this is where we plan to build the facility. This is how many units, this is how many acres, this will be the density. That was the, that was the first that we knew of, of the tax credit project. Is, is this sort of thing happening in other cities? Is it just the right climate for this kind of proposal? Uh, you know, again, they, the, the federal government opened around a tax credits. Uh, Nacogdoches is, is, a, uh, is, a, is a bright spot, will score well because we have not had one in a while. Also, again, the Northeast part of our community uh, do, has, has not had one in a long time. And so it scores very well. And so if you'll kind of look at a map of where they're all uh, uh, have applied, it's all uh, in, in that Northeast, uh, uh, actually that census, census tract, that's the Northeast ward of our city. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, thank you all for your questions. And Mayor Mice, thank you for your continued service to the city of Nacogdoches and your representation. We very much appreciate it. And you're certainly welcome back at any time. Uh, I, I, as promised, I'm going to uh, ask the uh, president of Stephen F. Austin State University, Dr. Scott Gordon, to give us a, a brief, brief update. Good morning, Dr. Gordon. Thank you, Wayne. And, and uh, again, um, just so everybody knows that our leadership cabinet meeting are at, uh, is on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. So when I can, I will be on this call. Otherwise, we'll have uh, we'll have somebody from the university that will be um, sitting in for my stead. Um, just a few uh, quick updates. Um, you know, last week, if you would have asked me how things were going with COVID, I would have said uh, um, not so well. Um, our numbers were climbing and. Uh, our isolation rooms were starting to fill up, but I will tell you that over the last three days, the numbers have been going in the right direction. We last Friday had 254 positive cases. Uh, Monday, we went down to 182, and today we're down to 131. So um, we're down to uh, just a little over 20 students in isolation. At a high point, we're up in the 50s. And so we are going in the right direction. We've got a lot of testing occurring on campus and uh, 
And so we're really uh, uh, positive and, and uh, have a, a, hopefully have the uh, COVID under control here as we're seeing those numbers decrease. Um, we're in full swing this semester. Uh, the spring started a few weeks ago and uh, a full slate of events. Um, I would encourage people to go to our website and click on the, the calendar link, which is on the very top. You'll see all the events from um, athletic events and arts events. And really this week, a lot of these things are ramping up. So I um, encourage you to, uh, to go there and look at uh, all of those uh, events. You know, it's, uh, it's January, but uh, you know, we're in full force trying to uh, look at and enhance our enrollment for fall. Um, things are, are looking uh, pretty good right now. It's still early, but looking good with uh, um, the number of applications and the number of admitted students. And a special high point is that uh, you know, our Distinguished High School Partnership Program, which we, uh, we started last academic year, um, is really starting to take off. We have probably 75% of those Distinguished High School Partnerships that have already exceeded their uh, previous year's totals in um, applicants and admittance. Um, in fact, some of those uh, schools have more than doubled. So that's a program we're, we're very excited about and we're looking to continue to expand. And uh, we, uh, we want to elevate our enrollment, elevate SFA, and uh, we want to, uh, to uh, elevate partnerships as well. And we'll be uh, um, hopefully sometime later this spring be announcing some more formal partnerships that we've had with uh, we'll be having with community colleges business and industry and and so on so that's my report thank you dr gordon any questions of dr gordon i just have a quick comment dr gordon I, first of all i want to remind everybody that uh, we're going to cram the coliseum for the lady jacks outstanding basketball team this saturday and uh, i would encourage anybody who's available to come uh, we had a great outing a week ago last Thursday night uh, uh, with the Lumberjacks, and uh, I bet uh, we'll have just, a, just as good a crowd on Saturday. So let's and don't, Wayne, don't forget, I, before that, we have Interact with the Jacks. Right. I was just going to say that. Uh, Lady Jack and Lumberjack uh, baseball and softball teams uh, this Saturday, 10 a.m. at the Lottie Namola uh, Basketball Performance Facility. Um, meet 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 those players, a lot of activities, and then you can go right over to the game. Thank you. Any other questions with Dr. Gordon? Thank you, Dr. Gordon, and uh, good luck with your meeting today, sir. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome the city manager of the great city of Nacogdoches, Mario Canizares. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, Wayne. I uh, appreciate uh, being on the call, and Mayor Myers, good job. Appreciate you. Appreciate your comments. Uh, just kind of gets a couple of highlights of what's going on. Uh, we are preparing for a council meeting next Tuesday. Uh, it's fairly full agenda. We are going to be uh, having a, and again, I don't want to steal Larissa's thunder because I think she'll cover a little bit more and a little bit maybe more in detail here in her comments, but we are going to have a, a workshop discussion with city council to give the full council a briefing on the low income housing tax credit program. No action will be taken taken at that meeting, but really just give them an understanding of what that program's about, uh, the locations in which those developers are, are seeking to, to build in our city, or at least where they're proposing to, to locate. Uh, and also just, again, just give the briefing uh, for the council and the community as, and as the mayor mentioned, uh, we'll be having a, a, a community meeting the following day. Uh, one of the other items that we'll be presenting next Tuesday is uh, some SFA student appointments to the Comprehensive Land Use Plan Committee and the Downtown, uh, 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 the downtown Master Plan Committee. Uh, that's one of the things that council wanted was uh, some student representation from SFA. And so we'll be making those recommendations next Tuesday. So hopefully we'll get that started and we'll get those students up to speed and get them going on the committee in the committee process. Um, another item for discussion next week uh, is a presentation by our library manager, Mercedes Franks. Uh, she is just going to be there to, to present uh, highlights of some upcoming uh, policy changes uh, in the library and just to give a briefing of council. And it's good to have uh, uh, Mercedes in front of council and really she shows a, a deep passion for the library, for library services. And so it's exciting to have her in front of council to 
to share uh, her, her uh, level of activity there at the library. Uh, last week, the mayor, Steve Bartlett, our public works, in, uh, uh, public works director, city engineer, and our fire chief, uh, 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 Keith Kiplinger, uh, met uh, with Nolan Smith with Encore. Nolan's on the call. I don't, I'm not looking to put him on the spot, but he replaced Roger Lindsay. Many of you know Roger. Uh, Roger has moved uh, to Fort Worth area, and Mr. Smith has taken on his role as being the area representative from Encore. It was good to make introductions. Uh, from our staff to him um, as we roll into the winter months and uh, just discuss uh, again electricity reliability uh, developments in the community and just really put a name with the face and so really looking forward to working with uh, Mr. Smith um, uh, to make sure that as issues come up we have a, a direct connection with Encore for that vital service. Uh, and the last piece I'd like to mention is, uh, is Dr. Gordon mentioned in, in his comments about COVID uh, certainly, we're not immune by that. Uh, our organization has taken its toll with uh, operational issues, but we continue to host vaccine clinics every Friday. And I'll just make another pitch uh, that uh, this Friday we will have another vaccine clinic at the CL Simon Recreation Center from 9 to 1 for adults and then for children 5 to 11 at 115. And for those of you who are looking to either get your first set of vaccines or a booster, if you will please go to our website at www.nactx.us. There will be a radio button at the very front of our website with coronavirus information. And from there, you can sign up uh, for an appointment. So it is a service that we've been working with our firefighter paramedics along with SFA nursing students. And so we continue to offer that service to make sure our community is well positioned to obtain vaccines when they need it. And with that, that concludes my report, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mary. I appreciate that. Any questions of the city manager? Mary, I just have one question. Uh, since the uh, infrastructure bill passed on the federal level, do we anticipate any funds that might be available to, to help you guys address your infrastructure challenges here as it relates to sewer and water? Well, uh, certainly, as the mayor mentioned, uh, we are poised to receive some monies through um, uh, some monies that we've already received through through federal stimulus monies. Uh, but definitely in the future infrastructure bill, we do think that there will be some opportunities for for cities and, and counties to receive some some additional funds through that process. So uh, it's really it's really reading through the regulations to see what we're eligible for. But absolutely, if, if we're eligible for it, we're going to be being pretty aggressive to go for civil. I appreciate that. You know, it's a, it's kind of a chicken and egg situation for you folks down there because, on the one hand, we certainly want new development in the city, but can, it's a capacity question, I suspect. Correct, it is. And uh, I, I don't envy the challenge that you folks face on that. So, thank you very much, Mario. We appreciate that, sir. Absolutely. Uh, to introduce you, the president and CEO of the Nacogdoches Economic Development Corporation, Larissa Philpott Brown. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Wayne. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to beat a dead horse on the housing tax credits. I think we've covered it a lot, but just to remind everybody, the workshop is on February the 1st before City Council. They'll just be learning about tax credits. Um, this is something, this is a really old program. It was started, I think, in 1986 by the Reagan administration. Each president and each Congress that's come through has updated it and changed it a little bit. And we get these applications probably every five or six years. We'll get a round of applications, and that's due to the way that they're scored. Um, and so it's time for those applications to pop back up. And so we're just going to spend a little bit of time with city council educating them on February 1st. They will not be taking a vote on February 1st. Then February 2nd is that community meeting at the rec center at 5.30 p.m. Um, and then on February 22nd is when city council will be considering resolutions of support or resolutions of opposition or resolution of no opposition. Um, so y'all are welcome to come um, to any of those meetings. I encourage you um, to come and ask questions on that February 2nd community meeting. Um, that will be open to the developers and I'm just going to introduce each one and let them show their development to the community and, and let y'all ask questions. The other thing I wanted to talk about is our job fair. Um, NEDCO 
is sponsoring a job fair with Workforce Solutions, also at the Rec Center, on um, this coming Thursday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'll have a bunch of employers there as well as other agencies um, to help you, like um, Veterans Resources, Workforce Solutions, um, things like that. So, and please tell your friends and employers. Uh, I think there's still a few spots open for anybody who needs to fill positions because I know there's a lot out there looking to hire. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of President Philpot? Thank you, Larissa. We appreciate that. And I do want to let you folks know that uh, NEDCO and the Chamber are partnering uh, as we speak right now on a, on a seminar on concealed carry that's being conducted by uh, uh, Lieutenant Bill Kennedy in the next room. So uh, we've certainly got a busy morning uh, going on here at the Chamber and with NEDCO. So we really appreciate our partnership with NEDCO. It's my pleasure to introduce you, the Executive Director of the uh, Visit Nacogdoches organization, uh, Sherry Cheney Morgan. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning, Wayne. Good morning, everybody. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, Smith Travel Research reported a 12.5% increase in hotel occupancy from December of last year. For the calendar year of 2020, we were showing a deficit of 22% over uh, what we saw in 2019. And in 2021, so the end of this last calendar year, we are now up 22.5% from 2020. So um, this is sort of uh, this set of, of data that came in really sort of sealed in concrete our recovery from any loss of hotel occupancy that we saw due to the pandemic. So it was a great sign for us. Um, and we look forward to more numbers showing uh, increases. Visit Nacogdoches will be contracting with a third party company called Rentalscape that will allow us to identify short term rental properties from platforms that you're familiar with, such as Airbnb and Verbo, et cetera and get those that are eligible for local hot tax remittance registered with the city's finance department. And it'll also allow us back-end data similar to that which we receive from the Smith Travel Research for our traditional lodging partners, such as occupancy, average daily rate, revenue per available room, and also bookings. But most importantly, contracting with this service and having access to this data it will allow us at Visit Nacogdoches to offer a more comprehensive and cohesive marketing of the varied lodging options in Nacogdoches to our visitors and guests. So um, uh, the Visit Nacogdoches board was very excited to enter into this. It was incredibly affordable and will pay for itself. Um, it'll level out the playing field. So everybody that is offering um, up lodging to visitors and guests will all be remitting at, you know, will all be remitting, period. So it sort of levels the playing field. Uh, Mayor Mize also mentioned our uh, collaboration with our counterparts in Lufkin. So we are actively working on an initiative to work and program with Lufkin for more regional collaboration. And for our first project, um, we are securing another third party group that offers a web based digital passport system that can pull traffic from Lufkin into Nacogdoches and vice versa and vice versa. So imagine a taco trail or a dine around the pines passport, um, wine, whiskey and brew that includes both communities, a coffee trail, et cetera, that sort of thing. Um, the total cost for this is fourteen thousand five hundred dollars, which is a lot of money for anybody, but especially for us. Um, and that would only work if Lufkin agrees to split the cost. But even at half of that, 7250 we would need sponsorship to help defray the cost on our end. Um, I met, had an opportunity to meet um, with Tara Hendricks, who's the executive director for Visit Lufkin. She's new to the job. She's started December the 6th. Um, she's, uh, she, you know, she's trying to stay afloat right now. She's, you know, there's a big learning curve for her right now. So. And what she communicated to me was that she really needed something that we could, we here in Nacogdoches could sort of be at the driver's wheel for this until she can catch up to speed. Um, and, and we are taking at that. Ideally, we would like to have one shared big event um, between the Pines, so between Lufkin and Nacogdoches that we can do. But um, 
something interesting that came out of the conversation with her was, I think we have these historic preconceived ideas and notions of this um, relationship or lack of a relationship or, um, you know, just bad feelings, bad blood between Lufkin and Nacogdoches. And, you know, from her, her stakeholders are saying, yeah, Nacogdoches never wants to work with us. And, you know, from Nacogdoches, we always hear, yeah, it's Lufkin, they don't want to work with us. When the fact is, we both want to work with one another. It's just finding those ways um, that are easy and that um, really benefit both communities equally. And, um, you know, Nacogdoches, hopefully, fingers crossed, this is my opinion, um, but, you know, I, I read on Facebook and people, oh, well, why did Lufkin get a five below? And why do they always get this restaurant or this chain? Um, Nacogdoches, hopefully, will never be Lufkin. And I hope Lufkin will never be Nacogdoches because each of us has our inherent charm and um and an aesthetic to us and so i think what this initiative and working together and collaborating it it sort of gives um the visitor who by the way doesn't really remember lufkin and nacogdoches they just know that they came to east texas and had a great time um but it really provides the best of both worlds so if you do want more chain restaurants and and mall shopping and um, you know, big movie theaters, then that's your thing. But if you really, you know, if your aesthetic is more a mom and pop shop um, with great antiques and bountiful history, then, you know, 20 minutes up the up the road, you've got Nacogdoches here. So I think at the end of the day, um, both communities are really going to prosper from this initiative. And I give credit to city leadership for um, putting this as a priority across sort of cross curriculum for us here. Um, we are very excited here at Visit Nacogdoches to be part of Reese Runnels Girl Scout Silver Award Project. Reese is the granddaughter of uh, Charlene uh, Reese at Reese's Jeweler and the, and the daughter of Shay Runnels Reese, who is the our board chair for Visit Nacogdoches. She's researched, Reese has researched all of Nacogdoches' pet-friendly assets with the end goal of a published brochure for Visit Nacogdoches to use. Reese will be making her presentation to our board next month. Um, and I mentioned this because we always love to, you know, primarily we are here for the visitor, but we do uh, love those opportunities that we get where we can be a part of the community. And certainly uh, the Girl Scouts have a presence here in Nacogdoches and provide a great service um, to young women as, uh, you know, as, as they grow up. I myself am a, am a Girl Scout. Um, I was asked to leave, but that's a story for another day. Uh, be on the lookout for some Love Knack themed Valentine's Day gift offerings in the next weeks. And lastly, on February 23rd, I will be presenting the importance of story keeping to the Wednesday Rotary. And I have some surprises up my sleeve. So join us there if you can. Um, as usual, thank you all for everything that you do to make Nacogdoches a great place to visit. Thank you very much, Sherry. Any questions for Sherry? Thank you, Sherry, very much for that, uh, that update. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the uh, Communications Director for the Nacogdoches Independent School District, Les Leinbarger. Good morning, Les. Good morning, Wayne. Good morning, everyone. Um, as you all know, we had to have a stoppage for a few days last week because of staffing issues, both in the classroom and behind the steering wheels of our buses related to the coronavirus. But since returning on last Wednesday, our COVID cases are, uh, are in decline as of the moment. We've, uh, we're grateful that things are settling down now and uh, we remain cautiously optimistic as we move on through the spring semester. Uh, yesterday here at the uh, District Support Center, the steering committee for the new Nacogdoches ISD Education Foundation held its second meeting. This is part of a year-long process of establishing the foundation that will include uh, obtaining tax-exempt status from the IRS and fulfilling other state and federal requirements to constitute a 501c3 corporation. The steering committee, which also includes our mayor, Jimmy Mize, who we just heard from, represents the start of naming a board of directors that will ultimately guide the foundation's formation and establish its direction in the coming months. The foundation will ultimately be able to accept contributions that can fund a number of initiatives within the districts, uh, such as grants to teachers and staff, 
that would pay for innovative projects in the classroom that will benefit NISD students. Erin Windham, who's also on this call, is added to her duties with the district and will serve as executive director of the Education Foundation. And over the next several months, as we continue to move forward with this, you're going to hear more about the foundation as we begin to contact potential board members to provide guidance and leadership to this. Uh, Wayne, this is something we're really excited about, and uh, we're we're grateful that we finally got this off the ground and moving in the direction we've got it going. And Aaron has already done an outstanding job. And Aaron, feel free to jump in if I uh, said something wrong or you need to point out anything else I might have forgotten. But uh, we're really excited about this. Dr. Trujillo's played a key role in this. Uh, it, it's it really began gaining steam when Alton Fraley was still superintendent. And of course, it just like everything else, it got put on pause when the pandemic started. But we're really excited about this and uh, we can't wait to see this progress over the next several months. Thank you, Les. Any questions of Les or Aaron or anybody? Having uh, the opportunity to form probably a dozen 501c3s in my professional life and here at the chamber, we actually have the Chamber Foundation, which is a 501c3, which Aaron Windham chairs our education committee and it falls under that umbrella. Uh, you couldn't have a better person, in my opinion, in charge of it. So uh, uh, she'll do a bang up job for them and uh, it'll be a great tool for the, for the school system to utilize to avail themselves of additional funds for, for special projects. So that's, a great, that's great news for Nacogdoches. Uh, with that in mind, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce your president and CEO of the Nacogdoches Area United Way. I want to congratulate him and his uh, very capable staff, uh, Caroline, on a very successful recent campaign conclusion. Would you welcome Gary Lee Ashcraft? Thank you, Wayne. We uh, appreciate that and appreciate the support of, of all of you. I think everybody was involved uh, in partnering with the campaign, donating to the campaign. Uh, Kenny Rena is on the call. She is uh, uh, the campaign chair this year. Campaign uh, was the chair of the uh, United Way at one time and one of our most active board members. And uh, we came in, uh, Kenny would get the right number, but we came in right at 260, uh, which we were very, 60,000, which we were very, very pleased with. Uh, a lot of that was from our new initiative of uh, that Kenny uh, started uh, with our 365 circle and we plan to really ramp that up this year. We're gonna have a very aggressive year. Uh, the 365 circle is tailored for uh, small business uh, uh, and uh, very, very affordable. Uh, a lot of the campaigns, a lot of small businesses, are, they're not able to do the workplace campaign model. And this gives the small business an opportunity to par partner with the United Way and and has been received very, very well. So you'll hear more and more about that as we proceed through this year. Um, wanna let you know that we had the, the great car giveaway, uh, a very nice Hyundai Accent uh, 2021 to a wonderful woman. Uh, Betty Castro won that car. She is from CBTX. Uh, we had uh, five, I believe, finalists for the car and Rex was gracious uh, to give each, each finalist a gift uh, that was substantial, and we're uh, we're excited about what's going to come up this next year. This year, I mean, in 2022. But uh, Betsy's really enjoying uh, that car, and it was an exciting event at his uh, at his dealership. Um, I want to let you know about something I thought was very exciting. Again, Kenny was involved with me on this one. Uh, we are freaking fracked on these deals, but we were able to secure a. Uh, $10,000 grant uh, from United Way Worldwide. The grant is a result of COVID funds, of course. Uh, there were 400 applicants, uh, United Way organizations across the country. Uh, only four received the grants. The $10,000 is a big deal to our small organization. Uh, the reason that I eyeballed the thing is that there was a section where we could apply uh, for the grant to be used for upgrading our technology, of which our uh, computers and things like that in our office are over 12 years old. So uh, I'm surprised they still work. So we're gonna be able to now uh, uh, formulate a plan to, to communicate better with you all and to communicate uh, better when we have emergencies. Uh, 
with uh, our district, our, our networks and, and what have you. So I was really, really excited about that. I want to give a shout out and I'll embarrass him because he's, he doesn't, uh, he's, he's not about this. I am, you can shout out about me anytime you want to. Uh, but to Mike Ellswick, uh, I don't know how many of y'all were involved in the bell ringing uh, campaign in the December, but it was exciting and Mike was everywhere and his volunteers and what have you. Uh, I, I don't have a number from Mike. He's welcome to jump on if he wants to, but Mike, uh, you're doing a great job in uh, uh, elevating, as uh, uh, Dr. Gordon says, uh, the Salvation Army is everywhere. And all of our partner agencies are doing well uh, this year. We're, we're seeking more funding. The more funding, the more people we can help. Uh, we're all about raising money and giving it away uh, in an orderly, good fashion. Uh, mind you that uh, with all of this, we live in the uh, uh, second uh, uh, most poverty stricken region in Texas. And there's a lot of work to do. And our 20 some odd uh, leaders of our uh, agencies, our partner agencies, uh, work hard to do what they can to provide people opportunities to be in our workforce and go see uh, our friends at Workforce Solutions and go to work. And uh, so we're all about economic development right up there with NETCO, Chamber of Commerce, Workforce, and all of the rest. So with that, I think I can get off uh, this call and thank you for having us on the call, Wayne. Thank you, Gary Lee. Any questions of Gary Lee? Again, our congratulations on a successful campaign, Gary Lee. Just wanna let you know. Uh, first of all, I wanna take a moment, thank everybody. Thank Mayor Mize for being on this call here today. Uh, it certainly is, uh, uh, great to hear all of the happenings at the city, and uh, we wish you continued success. I want to thank all the presenters today that took time out of their busy schedules to join us today. Uh, this is our way of everybody having a clear understanding of what's going on in Nacogdoches, and it certainly helps me and my staff as we begin to plan uh, events. I want to remind you that Chamber Day in Austin with our neighbors to the south from Lufkin, Angelina County, will take place on the 15th and 16th of February. Uh, the registration is open for that right now. It's it's uh, it's going to be a great uh, event, uh, capped by the uh, reception at the Austin Club. And I hope you'll join us if if you're available. LSLS, the Lone Star Legislative Summit, is shaping up. It's gonna be a big event. And uh, again, that'll be April 7th and 8th at both the Fredonia Hotel and, and at the uh, beautiful campus of, NAC, of Stephen F. Austin State University. Leadership NAC will be taking applications in the next few months. So if you've got candidates, please get those names to Kelly as soon as possible so that we can get them into the pool. Uh, again, it'll be limited capacity but if you've got a candidate, and I bet right now we're approaching probably eight or 10 right now names that we've heard from, uh, please get those to Kelly as soon as possible. Blueberry Festival is already in planning. We've had our meeting, the first initial meeting. It'll be very capably chaired by Grace Handler once again. And we've got some new events, uh, including pickleball. Uh, that's a that's a new sport that I'm very interested in. If you're if you're a pickleball expert, then there'll be a way to participate. So we're looking forward to that. And again, that'll be uh, the second Saturday in June. And last but certainly not least, the Lot Crew, the Leaders of Tomorrow Crew, are meeting and having a great experience. We got 37 youngsters involved in that. And we will have the Noble Banquet, I believe, on March 28th at, at, on the campus of Stephen F. Austin State University. And the keynote speaker on that will be uh, will be uh, 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 Alton Fraley. He's going to come back and join us and and give us, uh, uh, a, a, I believe, a, an extraordinary address. So plan on putting that on your calendar. With that, there's nothing additional. I want to thank all of you folks for tuning in, and uh, we hope you have a happy and successful and prosperous week. Thank you very much.